So I once got a question from a subscriber asking, is it okay to do run, walk, run during a race, a half marathon? And the answer is yes, of course. If you've done any races, you know a lot of people do run, walk, run. But when I do a half marathon or race, I do my run, walk, run a little differently than if I'm out doing a training run. I'm here to tell you what I do. Welcome to Just Runner. I'm Ralph. So the way you do run, walk, run depends a lot about what type of run are you doing? You're doing a training run, you're doing a race, you're doing a long run or a short run. So when I go out and do a long run, I have slightly different objectives than when I do a race. So when I do a long run, I have two main objectives. The first objective is get the miles. If you've done any reading with Jeff Galloway, you, you know he says the important thing in doing a run is to get the distance, get those miles in. And the second objective I have is that I don't want to be exhausted either after the run or the next day. So to achieve that, I keep my pace pretty slow, and I do that uh, by keeping my heart rate below 80% of my max heart rate. So it makes for a very long run during a, during a training run, uh, but that's what I want to do because I don't want to be exhausted and I want to get that distance. And when I actually do a half marathon, my objective is just a little different. Even though I don't care what my finish time is, I don't want to take forever either. And some races have cutoff times. You have to finish within a certain time or you'll be disqualified. So with that in mind, I tend to allow my pace to get a little higher and I try to go a little faster than if I'm doing a training run. And to achieve that faster pace, I allow my heart rate to get a little higher during the run. So during a training run, as I said, I will keep it at 80% of my max heart rate, which for me is about 142 beats per, per minute. But during a, a race, I'll allow it to go a little higher, maybe 83%, 82, 83%, approaching more like 147, 148 beats per minute. So that will allow me to have a little faster pace, but then not be thoroughly exhausted either. Uh, but, but allow me to maybe hopefully finish a little faster when I'm doing a training run uh, and also not um, be disqualified because I took too long. So let's assume it's a race. What do I do? Well, first off, I look at what kind of a ratio, what kind of an intervals am I using in my training run? Depending on my general fitness, for example, if I haven't been running for a long run for a while, for example, as I record this today, it's been several weeks since I've done a long run because of holidays and this, that, and the other. So I would probably uh, opt for a little lower ratio. In other words, one uh, uh, intervals I like is 75 second run and 20 second walk. That's a little under uh, a four, four to one ratio. But if I'm more fit, if I'm doing well, I've been doing my long runs regularly, I'll do more like a six to one ratio or I'll do like a 90 second run and 15 second walk. So depending on where I am in my ratios and my timing, when I get ready for the race, I will target a higher ratio. So let's stick with this 90 second run, 15 second walk I might be doing in a training run. For the race, I may up that to like a two minute run, 120 seconds, and a 15 second walk. That's an eight to one ratio and I will start that way. That'll be my target ratio and intervals at the start of a race. So when I start a race, what I do, well, I don't start my run, walk, run right away because you're in a pack and a lot of people, I will run for five or 10 minutes until the pack kind of thins out a little bit. Because if you're in a thick in the middle of a pack and you start <laughs> stopping and walking and so forth, you could you know cause a, a, a wreck. People could uh, trip over you or you could trip over somebody else. So after I've warmed up and the pack has thinned out a little bit, then I'll start my run, walk, run. I'll start that eight to one ratio, maybe two minute run, 15 second walk, do that for a while. And again, I'll let my heart rate be a little higher than a training run. A training run, I'll keep it at 142 beats per minute or lower. I'll let this go up to 148, maybe 150, but definitely below 150. Uh, let it go a little higher, get more into the anaerobic zone, but uh, not get real high. I don't want to get above 150. That'll just tire me out, and I'll have a really uh, tired and weak day after, if not end of race. Now, of course, you're getting into the race. You're starting to build up some miles. You start to get a little tired. What do you do? Well, you probably want to lower your ratio a little bit. So I'll take my 8 to 1 ratio, and I want to reduce it a little bit. Now, one thing you can do, of course, that I've done before is I just stop one interval, uh, load up another interval on my phone and carry on. But I also like to do it on the fly. I won't actually physically change it on my phone or my watch, but I will just do a little counting game here. In other words, when my timer will beep to walk, I'll start walking. Then it'll beep again to walk, say, at 15 seconds. But I will add another five. I will manually count 1,001, 1,002, and, and add another five seconds. When I do that, I'm also taking five seconds off my run time because I walk that extra five seconds. So instead of doing a 120 second run, 15 second walk, I just artificially change it to 115 second run, 20 second walk. Now my ratio is down from eight to one to a little under six to one. So I've kind of just 
we'll do that counting thing for a while now. Obviously, you, you may not want to count for an hour. Uh, well, I'll count as long as I want to, uh, but then maybe I'll stop and actually change my timer. Now, instead of counting five seconds, I count an extra 10 seconds. So that would take my walk time from 15 to 25 seconds and take my run time down from 120 down to 110 seconds. Now I'm closer to a four to one ratio. So I can just, without stopping and actually physically changing the intervals on my phone or my watch, I can artificially change them, keep the same overall uh, time interval. In other words, uh, 120 seconds or 15 or 110 seconds and 25 gives the same overall uh, cycle. Uh, but I've changed the ratio now, so it'll help accommodate the tiredness that I have going on. Now, of course, if you do have time as an objective in the race, in other words, you want to finish in say two hours, or you're trying to set a new personal record, then oh, everything I just told you uh, kind of goes by the wayside. In other words, you want to pick your, your run-walk ratio so you can uh, get a very fast pace, a pace fast for you. But for me, I, like I said, I don't care about time other than, other than I want to finish before the cutoff and I don't want to take forever. So I will go a little faster in the race than I do in the training room, but that's that's my objective. Yours may be different. Hey, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this today. If you like this video, please scroll down and hit those likes. Those help my channel so much, and I really appreciate it when you do that. And if you're new here, I'd love to have you stick around and be a subscriber. Hit that subscribe button also. Thank you and happy running.